So in this video we're going to explain how the uh, plato different platonic solids are nested inside each other. So we're going to start by looking here at the uh, dodecahedron, uh, like so. And uh, it turns out that you know, inside the dodecahedron we can draw a cube like this. Okay, so we have uh, make the uh, dodecahedron slightly transparent and uh, inside we see this cube. Uh, <coughs> So this, uh, yeah, uh, this is a, a nice standard uh, unit cube um, with the uh, vertices are like uh, uh, plus, plus you know, like one one one, one minus one one, one minus one minus one, and so on. Those are the uh, eight vertices of this uh, inside cube, and then uh, we, the uh, dodecahedron kind of sits around the outside. So to see how the dodecahedron kind of matches up with the cube, I mean, one way to think about it is we look at the cube; it's got uh, twelve edges, right? Uh, so, yeah. We look at this cube here, you've kind of got four edges around the top, four edges around the bottom, and then four vertical edges from the top to the bottom. That's 12 edges altogether. And uh, the uh, dodecahedron has 12 faces. And they match up like this. You see, you, each, uh, each face of the dodecahedron uh, has a one edge of the cube cutting across it. Okay, I and mean, here's one of our, we make it a little bit darker again. Yeah, so here's, uh, um, here's one of our faces of the uh, dodecahedron, and there's an edge of the cube that kind of cuts across. Uh, and uh, here's another, another uh, face of the uh, dodecahedron, edge of the cube cuts across. So each uh, <coughs> each face of the dodecahedron has a unique uh, edge of the cube cutting across it. Or we can kind of think about it the other way around. We can sort of look at the uh, the cube. Okay, so we take a one face of the cube here on the top, and you can see there's a kind of like tent shaped thing attached. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, each face uh, each face of the cube has a kind of tent attached to it. So uh, yeah, we've got uh, <coughs> um, yeah, we've got six faces of the cube and uh, so six tents attached like this and uh, these uh, tents they kind of line up yeah, it turns out the, uh, you've kind of got this tent here you've got one uh, it's got an end sheet of the tent there and the, uh, the side sheet of the tent here and uh, uh, everything's kind of arranged in such a way that it all fits together these all line up and uh, this uh, this bit here and this bit here line up to make a pentagon um, so this is one way we can think about how the uh, dodecahedron is defined uh, we take uh, take a cube and we uh, um, we attach tents to each uh, each face, uh, and we have to make sure we uh, organize the uh, precise dimensions of the tent in exactly the same way, and uh, we, then we get a dodecahedron. Uh, in fact, uh, you can see down here we've given the formula uh, for how the uh, vertices of the dodecahedron work. Well, of course, in the vertices of the cube, those are some of the uh, some of the vertices of the dodecahedron, but then you get Bunch of more, bunch more vertices of the dodecahedron that are uh, not on the on the cube, like here and here, and th these all are like uh, zero uh, plus or minus tor plus or minus one over tor, or a cyclic permutation of that, where we push the zero over to the end or, or in the middle. You know, so these are uh, so the basic things like this: uh, plus or minus tor plus or minus one over tor. Where tor is this uh, number here that's called the, the golden ratio, uh, square root of five plus one over two. Okay, so uh, it turns out that's uh, that's the uh, precise coordinates you need in order to make a uh, regular dodecahedron. But anyway, let's carry on. So we've got our cube here. Uh, but then uh, it turns out we can go inside the cube, we've kind of naturally got a dodecahedron sitting inside, uh, so not a, a tetrahedron sitting inside here. Okay, And uh, the kind of way this sort of fits together is, is sort of the same as, as the last stage with the dodecahedron in the cube. Okay, we've got, uh, uh, we've got our six faces of the cube and acro cutting across each face of the cube, there's one edge of the uh, tetrahedron. Uh, alternatively, you know, we can sort of start by, we can look at the tetrahedron, and then uh, in order to make the cube, we take uh, each face of the tetrahedron, we attach a kind of pyramid to it, like this. And the uh, precise dimensions of the pyramid have to be organized in such a way that everything will line up uh, neatly, and you get kind of flat faces. <clears throat> okay, and so notice that uh, you know, we, we had uh, uh, we had eight vertices for the cube, and uh, half of them, uh, half of these, uh, four of these eight vertices are still vertices of the tetrahedron, and then the other four uh, are, uh, are not vertices of the tetrahedron. They're kind of sitting off to the side. Uh, the way it works is you remember the uh, vertices of the cube, uh, like plus or minus one, plus or minus one, plus or minus one. And so you've got some, some plus one for each vertex, you've got some plus ones and some minus ones. And you can ask whether you've got an even number or an odd number of minus ones. Um, if you've got an even number of minus ones, which means either zero minus ones or two minus ones, uh, th you know, those ones are giving you the vertices of the tetrahedron. 
and the uh, vertices where you've got an odd number of minus ones, but you can either a single minus one or three minus ones. Uh, that's going to those ones are, those are these ones that stick out here and are not uh, not vertices of the tetrahedron. Okay, so let's carry on. Yeah, here's our tetrahedron, and then we can uh, see inside the tetrahedron uh, we've got a nested octahedron. But this is nested in a slightly different way. Uh, instead of kind of having uh, edges of the uh, octahedron cutting across the edges of the tetrahedron, instead what we've got is we've got the faces of the octahedron. They kind of uh, nestle. Uh, they they kind of cover some part of each the face of the uh, tetrahedron. So the middle middle quarter of each face of the uh, uh, tetrahedron uh, is one of these faces of the octahedron. And then you get uh, so you get. So half the faces of the octahedron lie flush with the faces of the tetrahedron, and then the other, the other half of the uh, faces of the uh, octahedron are kind of cutting across like so. Okay, so where we've got we've got an octahedron sitting inside the tetrahedron, and then we can carry on and so kind of similarly nested inside uh, the octahedron, uh, we've got a an icosahedron. So we had the uh, uh, octahedron like this, and then again you know, the middle quarter of each uh, triangular face uh, is a smaller triangle, half the size, and we take those and they form some of the uh, uh, some of the faces of this uh, icosahedron that's nestled inside. Um, and you don't get all the. Uh, uh, I mean, you've only got uh, uh, eight of the twenty faces of the uh, uh, icosahedron occur like this, uh, and then the other twelve they're kind of. Uh, uh, sort of nestled inside, uh, they don't they don't touch the surface of the octahedron. So yeah, so there we've got an icosahedron sitting inside uh, the uh, uh, inside the uh, octahedron here, and uh, you can again you can give formulae um, for for the exact coordinates of everything, and uh, again it's uh, all done in terms of this golden ratio. Tor is root five plus one over two, uh, and uh, you get these uh, one over tors, one over tor squareds. Uh, Giving, occurring as the coordinates of the uh, vertices of the uh, icosahedron. So there's your icosahedron, uh, and that's where we stop, right? We, uh, we've got five different platonic solids, the uh, dodecahedron, then the cube, then the tetrahedron, then the octahedron, and then the icosahedron right in the middle. So that's how the uh, different platonic solids uh, nest, uh, nest inside each other.